my talk is going to be on theory of elasticity and topological defects yeah yeah can you hear me this is off can you hear me yeah thank you yeah so this talk is going to be on the theory of elasticity and uh, topological defects uh, <clears throat> so i should thank uh, the organizers for kind of subscribing to the view that elasticity theory is a part of statistical physics in which you don't have to invest in thermometer okay so <laughs> so i am going to talk about these systems yeah so think of a membrane or uh, you know a surface on which there is a vector order let's say unit vector and these are like the integral curves of or field lines of that uh, vector field uh, these are realizable systems there are other systems which i'll come to later can you hear me Okay, I think I have to talk louder. Yeah, uh, we'll get there hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, yeah. So there are many systems. I have listed them. The point is that uh, uh, these systems can have tunable bending rigidities, interfacial tension, as well as edge tension. Okay. Uh, and there are groups of people working on this there are lots of thermotropic as well as lyotropic lipid crystals there are just about a dozen phases which are like uh, periodi periodically stacked sheets which have vector order and there is some technological possible technological application in basically designing gaussian curvature of sheet like or lamellar system so the standard example is uh, this is, you can actually so so this is a lamellar system uh, which is a smectic actually and you can hyperswell such systems so that you get isolated fluid membranes okay uh, there are systems again this is the gel phase of bilayer membranes where Uh, there is a tilt order there is no in plane order this picture is not quite right there is no in plane order so the membrane itself is a fluid membrane but there is tilt order and i can define a vector which is sitting on the membrane so we are all familiar with uh, the xy model and uh, the low temperature elasticity of course i am not going to talk about temperature uh, is just the grad theta squared <clears throat> and i just vary it and i get the equation of equilibrium together with the boundary condition the free boundary condition that's the nature that's in the nature of variation of problem now what happens if i put this model on a deformable surface i can change the shape of this uh, surface first of all you need a local orthonormal frame to define an angle then we need to take into account the frustration of this vector field or with what i am calling the orientation order upon parallel transport okay i will show you pictures of this this uh, frustration leads to topological defects and these are standard diagrams this is a plus 1 this uh, it's the vortex Uh, vortices in soft matter are called disclinations okay so that's half the part yeah yeah getting there uh, so these are plus 1 i go anti clockwise the vector field rotates by uh, uh, rotates anti clockwise by 2 pi one side traverses 2 pi this is a minus 1 uh, that's the definition and basically uh, you can because theta field is singular at that point curl of gradient theta is some quantity which is the index 
for that uh, defect. Uh, now, if I define a function chi, which is called some stress function, so that it is the anti-symmetrized version of gradient theta, then it identically satisfies this equation. Uh, <clears throat> and just using this uh, relation, you find that uh, the Laplace of chi gives me the length of the distribution. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like that, but it's a very different object. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm, this is, I'm talking about something else. Yeah, so this, uh, everyone knows, I think. Uh, this is just that to say that uh, on a surface, I need to, <coughs> if I need to parameterize the surface, I need two parameters. And with a position vector, I can define tangent vectors, etc. <coughs> define the curvature tensor. And the mean uh, curvature is just this. The Gaussian curvature is this. So I had talked about frustration upon parallel transport. So if I have, for example, a sphere, and I take a vector field and uh, go through one-eighth of a sphere here, uh, then the vector field rotates by pi by 2. So basically, the angle deficit was uh, divided by the area <coughs> enclosed, excuse me, the Gaussian curvature. Uh, if I parallel transport, so this is this is easy to calculate because a sphere has constant Gaussian curvature. Uh, in general, if I look, take a vector v and parallel transport it, when it comes back, it's v prime. The difference <coughs> between uh, the new vector and the old vector is given via this uh, curvature tensor, and this r, the scalar curvature scalar turns out that it is twice the Gaussian curvature, uh, only in two dimensions, okay? Now, this uh, procedure of defining, taking a circuit and so on, immediately, you know, one suspects that uh, the Gaussian curvature must be the curl of some vector field. We'll get there. So, basically, the point I'm making is this. If you traverse a closed circuit, then Gaussian curvature gives you the angle uh, deficit per unit area in parallel transporting the tangent vector, and disclinations are angular defect in the orientation of order. Uh, the index is determined by the nature of the order parameter, whether it's a vector or a director, you know, or sort symmetry of the order. Now, if I have surfaces like this, a sphere, then uh, it is inevitable that I have at least one singularity of index 2 on it. Uh, here, so, so basically, this is a pneumatic order. These are vector order things. So here are drawn vectors. So you will end up with uh, 2 plus 1 defect for a vector field on a sphere, or you can land up with a 1 plus 2 defect at a given point. Okay? So, <clears throat> Yeah, I think that's all I want to say. Uh, <clears throat> I take a fluid membrane to begin with. I don't put this vector order on it. There is the mean curvature squared term here. Uh, the, 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 the membrane or the surface may have some spontaneous curvature, so that is taken into account by the H sub zero. Uh, there is the Gaussian curvature term. Include for generality a, mm, surface tension term and a line tension term. And it turns out, for reasons which I will discuss, that the lowest order isotropic elastic energy for the orientation of order is not just ordinary partial derivative of theta squared. Uh, it has this form and where there is this A, I'll talk about this vector potential A. And this is a measure of frustration suffered by the orientation of order on the on the curved surface. Uh, if I take this term, don't square it, and take the curl, the curl of gradient of theta, this is just ordinary gradient, 
gives me disclination density and the curl of A gives me the Gaussian curve. And the total energy is the sum of these two. Okay, orientation order, I have to set up a local orthonormal basis. Now this basis is different from the local internal basis, which I get from parameterization of the surface. I have to define tangent vector. Now I have a freedom, O2 freedom. I can orient the basis, local orthonormal basis in any which way I want at any given point. Okay. So, okay, so I can expand <coughs> the vector field I am interested in, the XY vector field, either in uh, terms of the tangent vectors or in terms of the local orthonormal basis. Uh, and I can write the local orthonormal basis in the tangent internal basis of the surface. This has a name. Uh, it has four legs because each of the indices have two legs. So if I, huh? yeah, I'll just one, just one, oh man, I'll, I'll go fast. So basically, oops, I'm really going fast here. Uh, yeah, if I wish to <coughs> use this degree of freedom in solving ordinary standard XY model, then I'll find that the true gradient of theta is uh, some partial of theta minus a where the A was that vector potential we talked about. And uh, basically this relation which we, I discussed earlier gives a, you know, there is the topology, a connection between the topology of the orientation order on the surface to the shape of the membrane. So this is called the theta equation. I just do that and I again land up with, uh, you know, like uh, Laplace n of theta equal to zero. Okay. Uh, you can write it in a different way, uh, you know, using link function. Uh, now, people have studied this and they find that if you have a plus disclination, then the curvature the surface wants is uh, positive. If you have a minus disclination, it's satellite. Okay. I'll try to go fast. This is some experiment. Oops, this is some experiment. Uh, in which you have pneumatic order on a vesicle and this is, this is modeling using. Uh, now the first question is, uh, so I'll just uh, have four results, four results. Uh, first is uh, how to uh, change the shape of a surface without changing the orientation order of it on it. So there is a method of doing that. You have to drag these integral curves from one surface to the other along the local normals. Uh, and I have to vary the shape here. That's not there in the ordinary XY model. That's uh, first the, the first result. Uh, this is not there I and mean, explained in the literature. Uh, we calculated uh, the shape variation and this. That's the result. Uh, there is some some work on this which is erroneous. Uh, we have obtained free boundary conditions and these are the two new terms apart from those uh, which are there for ordinary fluid membranes without orientation order. Uh, we have set up the covariant elasticity of almost all metrics with orientation order. Uh, I don't have time, so I'll, if there are questions, I'll be happy to answer at lunch time. Uh, then there is a combination of a vortex and a dislocation in chiral systems and it is called despiration, okay? And uh, we have, oops, we have calculated the energy difference between uh, a despiration which has a positive helicity index <coughs> and the negative velocity index and the difference of between these energies is this and this is about one piconewton. So uh, again, uh, okay, I should just state that uh, dispirations till now have not been described in terms of the helicity. So I thank these people and I thank all of you. Thank you, Yashita. Just one question. Uh, 
of order p conutens for thermotropic uh, typical thermotropic magnetic sea star system. So, magnetic sea stars, I will take uh, three minutes to describe the structure. In the, yeah. Yeah. Half a question. No, the projection of the headless, the director which is headless is a two vector. The symmetry is layer normal goes to minus layer normal, that vector, projected vector flips its sign. So it's a vector. Yeah. 